Hi, I'm Margaret Wheeler, the director of the ARI Education Committee. This video offers pro tips for aspiring or working avalanche professionals to prepare for the avalanche rescue exam on any American Avalanche Association approved Pro One course. If you haven't seen it already, you can check out our first video that covers the foundations of avalanche rescue here. In this video, you'll learn the standard for the skills that you must demonstrate to pass the rescue exam on the A3 Pro 1. You'll learn how to get the most out of the time that you spend practicing for that rescue exam. And we'll show you some tips and techniques that you can use to manage the common problems that can come up during your rescue exam. The Avalanche Rescue Skills Exam is a pass-fail test that every Pro 1 candidate must pass. Our first tip is this. Familiarize yourself with the evaluation criteria and practice so you're comfortable and confident with your skills. The standard is that you must find and dig up two transceivers buried up to one meter or about three feet deep in a 50 by 50 meter area. For reference, the size of the search area is about half of a football field. To keep the exam consistent across venues, the search area will be in simple terrain. There could be scattered trees or small gullies, but the exam principle is to keep the terrain pretty easy. With a 50 by 50 meter exam scenario, you may start off with a signal or you may need to do a signal search to pick up the first transceiver. By including the signal search in your rescue practice, you will be ready for either situation. Here's what your success might look like. 45, 40, 35, 27, 19, 15, 12, Seven, six point eight, five point six, four point three, three, two point six, one point six, one point three, one point one, one point three, one point zero, oh, one point one, one point zero, oh, one point four. I'm gonna probe here. Twenty, eleven, thirteen, nine point eight, seven point five, three point three, two point two, one point six, one point four, one, one, one point one, back to one, 
one point one back again to one one point one all right that's my lowest spot Digging is hard work. So before you take your rescue exam, make sure you practice a lot and you're fit so you can succeed. If you practice well, you'll have plenty of time to be successful on your avalanche rescue exam. Let's start with some principles. First, make sure that you practice the exam standard. Actually measure the area so your search area is at least as big as the exam standard. Bring a helper who can bury your search targets at full depth. Use large backpacks as your target so you've got a realistic object to probe. Here's a pro tip. To keep your exam stress down, the single best thing you can do is actually rehearse each action. Remember, a beacon park can help you practice some of the skills, but since you can't dig up the targets, it's not the ideal way to practice for your exam. After you've built your practice area, the next key principle for good exam preparation is to focus on doing every step correctly. Practice makes permanent, so here's your next pro tip. If you notice you've made a mistake, stop, back up, and do it correctly. Rehearse your actions till the sequence is second nature. Try not to focus too much on your time at first. As your ease and proficiency with the skills goes up, your speeds will improve. The most common mistakes on the avalanche rescue skills exam broadly fall under one of two very preventable causes. Either not managing stress and or not remaining systematic or organized. That's great news for you, as quality preparation is the solution to both of these issues. Here are a few pro tips, specifically addressing common mistakes. This next pro tip might seem simple, but make sure you know what all the buttons do on your transceiver, including how to suppress or mark a signal. Read the instructions, practice using this function. Try it out in a variety of scenarios so there's no opportunity for your transceiver to do something unexpected. This will help you troubleshoot when issues arise. In general, the best approach to using your marking function is to hold your transceiver about waist level, directly above the signal you want to mask. Pro tip, stand still and keep the transceiver still before you hit the marking button. There are two possible outcomes. Either the next closest signal will display or if you are not in range of the next signal, you'll see indication to return to your signal search. If you have another signal, stand still, rotate your transceiver to reacquire the center arrow, and follow that next signal, yelling out your distances, getting slower as you approach. If you don't have another signal, return to the place where you began to follow your first signal. You remember that spot, right? From there, carry on with a normal search strip. As you practice, make sure you include a strategy for locating the second signal if your transceiver marking function isn't working. Make sure you practice backup search methods such as the micro strip or three circle method. Practicing in this way will help you to be better prepared both for this drill and for a real situation. Another common mistake is to get lost in the process, which just ratchets up the stress, whether you're in a real search or during the stress of a timed exam. Ultimately, this issue is a result of not practicing enough. But here's another pro tip. To speed up your learning, verbalize each action you take. This is a really effective learning tool to help you remember, and it has the added benefit of letting others around you, including the examiner, know what you're doing next. Another great pro tip to keep your stress down is keep your gear organized throughout the search. When you're looking for a signal, keep your transceiver in one hand and all your equipment together with your pack on. The only gear you leave behind through the search should be specifically placed as one of your indicators. Don't leave something lying behind haphazardly. Here are some really effective tips for staying organized and maintaining your spatial awareness throughout the search. 1. Pause, look, and mentally note where you leave your signal search pattern. 
two, indicate your trajectory approaching the burial site, usually around five to seven meters away. Using your ski poles in an intentional way works great here. And three, indicate your strongest signal so you have a center point for your systematic probing. Marking these three spots gives you spatial reference that really help you keep your cool under pressure. You never know what your exam might look like. To reduce your stress, practice different configurations so you're ready for anything. You're gonna do great. You've already taken the first step watching this video and committing to thoughtful practice. Good luck, you got this.